looking to build your own DIY powder coat oven, maybe this video will help. So stick around. Okay guys, so as I just mentioned, uh, I intend to build a powder coating oven off and on over the winter. Over the winter, so this could be like an off and on uh, segmented video as I, as I work on it. Um, now, this sheet of steel I've got here is going to be the base for my oven. So this will be the floor of the oven and I'm going to, I'll frame the underside after, but I'm gonna use this as the base to build off of. Uh, it's 14 gauge, uh, the sheet's 24 and an eighth by 19 and a quarter. So the original plan for my oven, because of the parts that I plan to uh, put in it, 18 inches uh, square on the inside and three feet tall. That's the intent for my oven. Now, the fact that this sheet is 19 and a quarter, I opted to change uh, change that out. So it's now 19 and a quarter by 18 by 36. Now, that being said, I only have 24 and an eighth here. And these metal studs are three and five eight by two by eight feet. So when you put three and five eighths from each side on here, uh, you end up with 17 inches approximately uh, in the middle. So I'm opting to go three inches so my my wall will overhang approximately a half an inch. So I'll have my 18 inches this way and 19 and a quarter going this way. So that's the plan for this piece of metal so that I don't have to do any extra cutting. The materials that I'm using, like I just showed you, the, uh, the metal uh, 2 by 4 framing studs, um, for drywall, that's the, the wall pieces, and I've acquired uh, a few pieces of this material here, 20 gauge sheet metal. Got all my pieces cut. I got four 19 and a quarter and four at 36 inch. Now the 36 inch ones, uh, I cut from the uh, the end to the middle uh, on each stick. That leaves me with four factory square ends to work with, okay? And I cut them just a tiny bit long so that I could go back over and adjust them with uh, the flap disc, get them closer, uh, all the pieces closer to the exact measurement. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, there's, a, there's a lip here on each side. I'm going to... I'm going to mark about uh, uh, an inch and five eighths. No, these are only, hold on, my mistake. I believe these are only an inch and a quarter on each side. And look, yeah, an inch and a quarter. So yeah, uh, I grind off about an inch and a half in uh, on each end here, on each side, so that uh, this piece will fit inside of that piece and uh, won't have that uh, that bit in the way. Now, it turns out it's uh, way easier just to snip it with a uh, pair of snips or cut it with a pair of snips. Uh, bend it out with a pair of pliers, put it over the edge of the table and hammer it flat. And then grinding it down with a flat disc like I did uh, down here. Got my first corner clamped together here, um, reasonably square, okay? Now, I highly recommend that you screw together or pop rivet these uh, metal studs together. Because uh, they are galvanized, okay? Now that being said, I'm choosing to uh, 
tack weld them together with the MIG welder. And I'm sure somebody's going to give me grief. Oh, galvanized, that's toxic smoke coming off of there. Yes, you're absolutely 100% correct. But this is the size of the tack that I'm putting on. Okay, that right there. Uh, I'm not laying, uh, you know, foot long beads on some plate metal coated in galvanized. Just a couple of little tacks to hold this in place. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is I don't want rivet heads or screw heads myself okay, um, sticking up when I go to put the top deck on this. Uh, I'll be able to just touch them with the grinder and they'll be flat. Okay, that's my plan. Now there you have it. Two little itsy bitsy tacks. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put fit this piece in, do the same thing, fit this into the top, same thing, get it all squared up, and then I touch these with the grinder, get tops off them so they're flush, uh, flip it over and do the same to the other side, and when I come back I should have two frames uh, ready to be covered in sheet metal. So here's my, uh, my two side panels and uh, I picked up some sheet metal screws uh, a lot of people they like I said they pop rivet these corners together so they also take their sheet metal here and they also pop rivet it to to the face of the uh, to their wall and uh, I'm decided you know I'm just going to use uh, use some sheet metal screws instead because I figure once this is all together as a single structure, I don't think it's really going to matter. And uh, my design is a little bit different than everybody else's. I got these two main end walls and then a single or two pieces of sheet metal are going to make the back wall uh, without any of these structures because I don't think they're really, really necessary. And then the top is also going to be uh, a single sheet of uh, of metal on the top, and so I don't think there's any necessary to uh, necessarily need to build more framework, but maybe attach some filler pieces in. So I'm gonna get busy, uh, cut this sheet of metal. I need to take about this much off. Okay, now all I done is cut the uh, cut the piece to size. I was going to leave it long, and then I changed my mind. I needed to be closer to size. So, I'll, like I said, I cut the piece to size with a cutting wheel. Um, went around, punch flange tool, punched some holes in it, and then I used the sheet metal screws and attached it. So that's the first panel done. I'm going to carry on and move on to the second panel, and then I'll have my two main walls. Okay, so my two end panels all uh, fitted with some sheet metal. My bottom piece, I marked it three inches, drew a line, three inches, drew a line. I'm gonna flip this up on the table and screw the bottom panel to the end pieces. I uh, apologize for the heater. I gotta stay warm, okay? So, the opposing line, this same line over here, lined it up not too bad clamped it clamped it on the back here I've already got the clamps off but I had it clamped on the back okay and then I shot uh, shot some screws in it and that's now uh, now in place do the same thing to the uh, the other side here and the two walls will be attached to the uh, to the bottom plate got that all screwed together and flipped upright on the table. Now I'm hoping this is reasonably flat because nothing around here is level. So, you know, I've been using a combination of squares to try to uh, help me along, along with, uh, you know, measuring tape. So I got that piece of metal clamped on the back, as you can see, and it's got a 90, a 90 form on it. So that's kind of holding things together here so I measure from here to there and from there to over here got it all clamped in so uh, it should be fairly uh, fairly square I hope 
Uh, I did. I just realized though that the heads of these screws are like uh, uh, an eighth of an inch. So what I think I'm going to do is uh, because they're on the bottom of here, just take a couple and drill some holes in the table and set them in on the center of the table, and that'll hold the center of this up so that it's level with with this, okay, or at least flat with it. Uh, and then uh, later I'm going to get to work on the back, okay, the back. I don't have a have a piece that is uh, big enough. It would cover at least over to here, and I could shoot screws uh, down this edge. And once I have everything reasonably squared in place, I could quite easily uh, take the MIG welder and just tack it uh, sheet metal to sheet metal and not this galvanized uh, framing here uh, together. Put several tacks down each side and uh, that would hold all that uh, together and, and it won't move. And then uh, what I may do is I have another piece of this, but it's not quite this size that I uh, actually might be able to use for the for the top here. Okay, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes as we go along. Uh, I don't really have a 100% plan, so you get back onto this in a day or two. Okay, it's a few days. I'm back at it again here. I got another piece of this uh, material, this 20 gauge with a, a small 90 on it, and I clamped it onto the front, and uh, you know, Adjusted these uh, adjusted the widths across here squared it up a little bit on the inside going up this way uh, And then I got another piece of that plate metal sitting up here ready to screw in And after I do that I'm gonna cut a piece of this uh, 18 gauge with a 90 on it and fit it in here tack it in and everything should be solid Okay, I've done exactly what I said I got the top piece screwed on three screws on this side Three screws on that side. I cut that piece of angle in uh, two pieces. Uh, welded one in the bottom here, and one up in here. Now this is all nice and uh, nice and stiff. Uh, I think it's safe. I can lay it on its front. Pull this uh, this piece off the back here, and uh, get a piece to fit in here and screw it to the back. Weld it along this edge because uh, I brought this out to. Uh, the sheet metal should butt up against here. That's kind of the idea. The sheet will butt up and I can tack it, whatnot, screw it in here and uh, tack it down here. Uh, and it shouldn't move. Then I should have my, my box. So I don't think you quite got the shot there before, but this is the lip I was referring to. The sheet's actually gonna sit inside of it just like that, okay? So I cut the sheet. It's a tiny smidge long so I can grind it off flush. Got hole punched in it, four on each side for the screws. Got it clamped in place here, you can see. So yeah, I'm gonna hold this uh, together here in the middle and get a tackle weld on it. And then I can release the clamp on one side. Same thing, get a tack over here. And the same thing, a tack over here. And then I can proceed and uh, put my screws in. Now, as you can see, it's standing up again. The back is on. So I threw a couple extra screws in after I tacked all that in. And now it's uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty sturdy. I got some two by twos cleaned up here. I'm gonna figure out how I can set them in underneath uh, to make, uh, make this base a little stiffer. Probably should have done that in the beginning. Uh, but uh, I was gonna use this stuff and then it's like, no, let's uh, find something else. Uh, I had to take it off the, the work table or the work stand. Put my uh, piece on the floor, flip it upside down. I got my uh, H frame kind of laid out here on the on the back of it here. Or the bottom, I should say. Um, uh, finish uh, Squaring this up, get some tacks on it, and then get it in position on the top here and uh, and weld it in. Had my H frame all lined up with those magnets, um, squared it all up, put a tack here, tack here, tack down there, same on the other end, and then uh, ran a three quarter bead here, uh, same on the uh, same as over here, and then on the opposite side. 
lined it up on the uh, on the bottom tacked it in on each of these corners on each uh, each end and here in the middle so this is pretty solid now and time to get thinking about a door so there's the oven standing up on the floor it's pretty sturdy um, getting ready to uh, start building the the door for the front here so we have 18 across this way 32 and a half this way so I figure um, I figure I make about an inch and a half bigger than the uh, opening this way in each direction and an inch bigger uh, this way in inch, each direction so I still got some of this uh, some of this galvanized steel studs here so I'm gonna need Two pieces at uh, 34 and a half and three pieces at 21 and the door is only going to be this thick as opposed to the walls being you know this thick so I got two pieces of metal left here uh, this one is just uh, just about the right length um, so I'm not going to be cutting the side off it you can see that's uh, just over 21 now they're not wide enough the other way on so uh, you know, I had to do this in two pieces no matter what. That's why there's going to be uh, three uh, three sections. So one will be in the center. So I get busy, cut, chop this up into those dimensions. Now I got all my pieces cut. Three at about 21, two at 34 and a half. And uh, I've gone and I've marked this edge here. This is going to get trimmed away this section here so that it can fit over top of that section there because I figure it's better off to have the long length um, the long length with it uh, with the skin on it and it's because there's going to be a little gap here when these overlap obviously so the shorter section will have the least amount of uh, of leakage or warpage when you know because the panel is going to you know have a little bow in it when it gets uh, gets screwed on there so yeah that's going to fit over top of there like that same on that same on that same on that and then of course a section in the middle which i'll have to figure out for the uh for the center brace now i got busy cutting up the first one i got that notched out and then uh, when i put this one inside i realized that the end the end here was uh, going to butt up against this uh, this channel pit here, okay. So what I did is I just notched out notched out the end there, so that when these these fit together, um, uh, they're 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 tight together. You can see that just like that. Okay, so I'll carry on, notch the rest of this up, and fit it together. So there it is. That's the uh, that's the basic frame. And you can see I got this all notched away. That was the first one over there I notched out completely. And then you know as you work you get a little smarter. I only half cut it out and then flattened uh, the crease out of it with a hammer. So that gets in there, makes the bottom, the center, which will line up with the hopefully the middle of the one of those sheets. And the top and the two side pieces so now i flip this over and uh start screwing the sheet metal on because this is factory cut metal so this is a square here this is square 100 percent this is 100 percent straight line and this is 100 percent a straight line okay so this was my narrow piece it's almost exactly the right size i may actually just go with that the way that it is because it, it really is it's only like uh, I think what was it an eighth of an inch bigger than it needed to be which is really nothing so get busy uh, flip this over start decking it and then I'll show you what I got done okay everybody makes a mistake uh, I don't know what happened when I measured this but my center brace is in the wrong spot sheets supposed to be from here up to here somehow I put that there so I have to notch this out up here move that up not a big deal I think it'll be all right now I fixed that mistake so that the center brace will fit 
I took the piece, laid it up on top, clamped it in. Because I mentioned earlier, this was a square edge on the factory sheet metal. Well, this is the square edge on the metal stud. And so it's this one. So I shouldn't have any issue lining these up in straight lines and everything be square. So I'm going to measure up, clamp the other side in, get a couple sheet metal screws in it, and carry on. Got the second panel cut to size, screwed it on, put the braces in, screwed those in, and uh, ended up staying at 21 inches and trimming and grinding the edge off of here. So it is what I said, uh, 30, uh, 34 and a half, I believe I said it was going to be. Yeah, 34 and a half by 21. So that's, uh, that's what it is. Now I'm probably going to have to... Uh, to uh, put on some type of uh, side braces here to uh, to mount hinges onto, and that will be uh, that'll be the next step probably. It is a little wobbly, but once hinges are on it and it's mounted to uh, to the shell here, it's a good chance that'll stiffen up. While I was waiting for the hardware to open, and uh, we'll get some hinges. Remember that piece of with the 90 on it. Well, I chopped it up into chunks. I got a piece to fit in the corner on the outside like that. And one for there. I got this one end already clamped up. This is clamped up like that. Um, conveniently, one went under the other because these are overlapped. Um, so I got them clamped on there. Uh, get the welder out and uh, flip it over. And weld this uh, to the door skin. Close the corner up, and then I'll put a little triangle in here or a little square to uh, help stiffen that up. I might not need it once I weld this to that, though. We'll find out as I go along. Pop a couple screws in it, and then that will be uh, the spot where I mount my hinge. Now I got these corners done here for where the hinges are going to mount. And I'm back from the hardware. I picked up an element, uh, a deadbolt. Uh, I hope maybe that'll uh, that'll work to keep the door closed and uh, some hinges this door doesn't weigh that much so I'm hoping these little hinges will do the job if they won't I guess I have to get some bigger ones so I'll get busy clean this up and uh, get the oven up on the table here and see about uh, getting this door put on got the oven up on the table Got the door in about the position I want it, and then I set the hinge here. Uh, the hinge doesn't sit flat. It actually has an emboss in here where it, it meets up to the barrel of the hinge. So um, it looks like that's about the uh, thickness of a piece of 20 gauge. So I'm going to cut a little, little piece, put it up there, tack weld it on, and then I'll be able to hopefully mount the hinge to the door. Uh, down here doesn't matter so much, um, but it definitely matters here uh, on the side of the door, I think. So I got a little bit ahead of myself. Didn't, uh, didn't film exactly what I was doing because I was kind of winging it as I gone along and figuring stuff out. So I put the piece in, tacked it in, put the hinge up, and, and I tacked it on. With the welder, instead of putting screws, uh, sheet, I would have had to gotten sheet metal screws instead of the wood screws that come with it. Um, and if I use these sheet metal screws, then the heads would knock together and the door wouldn't open at least to 90. So I did that bit and then I actually tack welded the hinge on and I put another piece under here and tack welded it on. Uh, and then I cut another piece and I put it on the back side here and screwed it down through. And then I just copied it and did the same up at this end. So the door swings quite nicely. And I also took that little latch and uh, same thing. I put a, a plate on the back to uh, to screw that into and just drilled a hole in. So you can open, uh, open the door. Uh, looks pretty good to me. Now, move on to the heater element. So I got the element in, all I did, lined it up, spotted it, drilled a couple holes, 
put it in, installed it with a couple of sheet metal screws. Okay, so now I got my thermal probe in. This uh, attaches to to this PID controller that I built uh, many years ago for another project that I never completed. So what this is is a little computer. You tell it what temperature you want. The probe monitors the temperature, and it has a uh, 40 amp, 250 volt relay in the back. Controller controls the relay and uh, turns the uh, turns the element off and on uh, to maintain uh, maintain a temperature. Now I got it all plugged in. Um, I set it to 205 degrees centigrade, so that's around 400 degrees Fahrenheit. We're already up to uh, uh, 45. Uh, 45. Um, the walls, the walls here, they're not hot yet. Uh, the door neither is hot yet, uh, but we can open it up here, and uh, yeah, element is uh, warming up nicely. So we'll close the door. And uh, I'll let that go for a minute. All right, guys, it's been uh, eight minutes, and we're at uh, 118 degrees centigrade of the preset 205. So it's moving along pretty quick. It's starting to stink in here a little bit because the sheet metal does have uh, have uh, lubricant on it. So uh, that'll probably be uh, burning off. But yeah, it's it's coming along. I think uh, it's going to work out. I'll uh, let you know here in a second if we hit, uh, hit temperature. Okay, so before we got too far along, I went in and I grabbed uh, my uh, barbecue and meat smoker uh, thermometer. Um, it come with a couple of probes, so I'm just sacrificing this one for this uh, this test. Uh, I'm at 295 degrees Fahrenheit. This one reads in Fahrenheit, so I'm at 295 there and 136 there. So, like I said, I'm gonna keep monitoring it and see if uh, see how this works out. All right, so this thing's been going for like an hour. It looks like I've maxed out at 100 and. 56 158 degrees centigrade uh this keeps bouncing between uh around 330 um i think you know it is the middle of winter okay there is just far too much uh thermal loss going on uh without insulation in there or possibly you know uh a stronger element i didn't think i would need uh, need any need any more than uh, than a 2,100 watt element to heat such a small area. So uh, I'm gonna shut this down for now and uh, see what I can come up with. All right, so I'm ready to try again. I went around all the uh, seams with heat resistant silicone this is rated to uh 450 degrees it says on the tube but when you check the website it says 500 so that should be good and i scrounged up some uh insulation and packed the end wall so I'll close up the door get things fired back up and see what happens Okay, so we're about 20 minutes in to this attempt, and we're at 340 degrees on the, uh, oh, we dropped. Okay, so that's where we're about, 340, or 166 on the Celsius. Uh, way better than the last time. Um, took an hour to get to 330, and then it quit. So the insulation and the caulking's making a difference. Hopefully, uh, can hit that 400 degrees.
Okay, so we've hit, finally, 400 degrees. And what I ended up doing was bumping the PID controller up to 250 degrees so the element wouldn't shut off. Now, I've been working off and on on this without you guys. Sorry about that. But I think you were getting kind of the idea what was going on. Um, insulation's a must. Uh, so I insulated the door and I made up a skin for it using uh, leftover material. Used the offset flange tool. And uh, so I could join smaller pieces together to make bigger pieces. Uh, I boxed in the top and I boxed in the back. So I all insulated. And it's all paneled in now, all the way around. Got paneling all the way around. Sealed the seams with the silver aluminum uh, heat tape there. And I uh, think we're ready to fire back up and, and see if I can get up to that 400 degree temperature. Now, I want to get there within, uh, within 20 minutes. Okay, that's kind of the goal. Uh, the only thing left maybe I need to do is actually put a seal on this door okay so i'm gonna get plugged in and fired up and i'll let you know what happens okay so i'll plug back in i'm set at 207 degrees centigrade so that's about 405 uh, fahrenheit uh, auto tune is turned on that's that flashing light so uh, when this gets to temperature it should hold temperature All right, so we hit 207 degrees Celsius, so that's 405 Fahrenheit in just under 20 minutes. Um, now the PID is beginning its calculations to maintain that temperature. So I'm really happy with that. Um, now we have to figure out how long it takes something in the oven to get to the magical 400 degrees Fahrenheit and then the bake time would start from there so yeah really happy with this uh... all right youtubers let's finish this uh this video up i uh, just got done this piece here uh, as you can see it's a it's a key for uh for an angle grinder um, i hung it up in here i turned the oven on brought it up to temperature and this small piece came to temperature uh, at the same time as the oven. So all I did was sand it with some 80 grit, wiped it with acetone, and uh, sprayed a coat of uh, uh, powder on it. And as you can see, it's kind of uneven. There's definitely a learning curve there. Um, hung it back up, turned the oven back on, baked it for uh, 10 minutes after it came to temperature. And uh, yeah, I think it turned out uh, pretty good for a first time. The oven definitely... Uh, definitely seems to work so uh, that being said I hung up there that being said uh, thanks for watching guys uh, look forward to some more powder coating uh, videos in the future so uh, as always thanks for watching until the next one peace